six and seven, which is is green and purple violet. So get your ribbon and keep them together if you can. Actually, does somebody have a full ribbon and I'll show you how to tear it off maybe in a group? Yeah, you got a full ribbon? Okay, so now what I would do here, I'll show you guys what, what I would do is, um, is I would tear it off like this, tear this part off, and then you gotta show, look at the camera. Right? Tear six and seven together. See, these are all the numbers. Like you, you guys all know how the numbering system works. Like brown is one, red is two, orange is three, yellow is four. Those should be automatic. You should just fully internalize that. Don't be looking on a table. A lot of people look at a table but you want to just know it. It's like if you're trying to learn music and you uh, said, oh, where's C on the piano? Let me look it up. Oh, here's C. Okay, press the C next note in the song. Let's look up that one and press that one. You don't want to be thinking that way. You just want to fully internalize it. Like many of us are sort of synesthetic, so we just see these numbers. Like I see that as a 67 when I look at it without really thinking about it. So when you have a big pile of resistors, you want to just grab the one that's the right value without thinking about it. So I want to kind of internalize it so it's automatic. So you grab your 67 here, and what we're going to do is put the seven uh, color 7, which is this, this uh, violet purple, into one side of the motor and color 6 into the other. And you can see what I've done here is I've got them in such a manner as that when the motor is turned in positive direction of angle counterclockwise, it delivers a positive voltage, and when it's turned clockwise, which is a negative direction of angle by convention, it generates a negative voltage. So if you look at the convention for how wires are, are done, uh, how, how these things are done, there's a kind of convention. And uh, and if you look in the argon plane, let's say this is the real axis, and this is the imaginary. Uh, when we're talking about phase, usually we talk about positive phase angle like this. Positive angle is counterclockwise. Phase is A10, imaginary over real. And likewise, when we're just turning a motor in plain, ordinary, simple way, we will have the motor just turning. This is positive direction of rotation, so it wants to produce a positive voltage. And likewise, this is a negative direction of rotation clockwise. So it wants to produce a negative voltage. So this should be minus, and this should be plus. So we expect when we turn the motor this way that it produces a positive voltage. And positive, by convention, is further up the stick. So the bottom of the swim stick, by gravity, let's say the heavy end, is this, is going to be your battery. But really, it should be balanced, so there's no heavy end in, in general. But the bottom of the stick is where it's connected, and the top is up here. So when you turn that motor, counterclockwise, what you want to see is you want to see the swim stick advance so that it goes up. So I'll show you how to connect it in that manner so there's less confusion, you know, and, and so on. And you'll have a USB battery. You need a USB battery and a USB cable, or you can just use your computer for now. We're not going to spin this thing. And originally, Initially, we're just going to go like this. So we don't really, at this point, at this early stage of the game, we don't yet need to mount the battery on the spinning mechanism because that's going to happen later. I just want everybody to get their name and lights first, do something really simple. So the uh, lab two is a very easy lab just to get started, um, to get something simple. And, and so the battery, some USB batteries have a little button you have to push to make them come on and some of them come on by themselves, you know, when you push it. So um, you've got three wires on this, on this LED strip. There's three pins on the LED strip. And you can see here that uh, the motor, when it's connected, so now if it's not connected fully, it'll be It'll be bouncing around uh, down from the, the center. But if it's connected right, uh, if you turn that, somebody want to turn that counterclockwise. Give it, give the motor. This, yeah, give the motor a spin. See when I spin it? And then, 
So that's, and then if you spin it clockwise, it'll go the other way. So what you'll have is you have that flying spot on here. And depending on which way you turn it, you'll see, see now I'm turning it counterclockwise and you can see it's going up the stick higher towards the far end of the stick, higher numbers on the stick. The LEDs start numbering the LEDs from the, where they're connected. So it's a shift register and the data is shifted along. So this is the lowest number of LED, next, next, next. And these are the higher numbers. And if you add more, you get more. This time, on this one, I've cut the, uh, um, I've cut the male end off. And, and then I would use that sometimes as the connector for the other end. Um, you've got the female end is where you put where the data comes in and that's the where it starts. So now uh, as I turn this in the counterclockwise direction it rises and and towards the end and when I turn it clockwise it falls it goes down. So that's kind of where the the the, the basic idea is if it's not connected it'll go to zero. Arch why is that white by the way? Why is that color white here at the base when it's not connected? If I disconnect the motor, why is it white there? If you see white at the bottom, you know your motor is probably disconnected, right? Anybody who want to see? Well, white equals red plus green plus blue. So all three traces have landed on one spot. And so that's why it appears white. And then when it's running, you'll see the traces. There's a little bit of noise, so you'll see them bounce around slightly differently, which is kind of nice because you can see the red, green, and blue traces bounce around. And when you plot it out, what we ultimately want to do is make a graph and slide it across. So notice here I've kept these together. Where, where was that motor? I'll, I'll connect it to the... Where'd the motor go? Oh, yeah. I'll connect this to the motor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect color 7, which is the the purple-violet, to one side of the motor, and I'm going to push it right in halfway, exactly in the middle, exactly in the middle here, push it in so that it grabs. This is like a breadboard. This is a solderless breadboard of sorts. So there it is. That's the, uh, all this is solderless breadboard, the motor as well as the breadboard. And then I'm going to push the other end, which is color six, the blue, in, in the same sort of way. Now the motor's connected. And I've left these connected to each other just for convenience. You know, they're adjacent colors, so I'll just leave them connected. And then if you have a breadboard, I can show you just, do you want me to, to get started? So what you've done is you've pushed, you've pushed this down to start with, so that's on there. You've got your two resistors here. These are, are uh, 470 ohm resistors. Um, and they form a voltage divider right across the outside of this thing. So the voltage divider goes from ground, which is this pin, and there's multiple grounds, by the way. One of the grounds is here. I figure we might as well use the one that's opposite the, the plus 3.3 volts. So we want a voltage divider between ground and 3.3 volts. So that the middle of here is halfway between ground and 3.3, the middle of that voltage divider. And that's kind of a virtual ground, if you will, for the motor. So that's the blue wire. It goes to the virtual ground, if you will. Now I can connect this motor up. So one thing we might do is, is connect the motor to one of these sticks here, just for fun. And you'll see what, what we have as, as we go here. I connect it this way so we can still see sequential wave and printing machine written there. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll take, these are M2.5 by 6 screws. So you want to take out two screws. Feel free to grab screws. I'll donate everybody some screws and some washers. And these are washers here. These are the right washers for M2.5. Um, sort of hard to find, but I ordered about 400 of them because the shipping was actually otherwise more than the price of the merchandise itself. Anyone have something to cut that with? I guess we'll just trim that away. If not, I'll just tear it and make a mess of it, but that's okay too. It's not as tidy. Maybe I'll grab some keys or something and give it a little scratch. And then that's a pretty fancy key. <laughs> hole in it. Good. Now I'm going to 
take two washers out of here. And feel free to grab yourself two washers and two screws. Mm -hmm. And then what you will do is, what we're going to do is put the motor in here like this. I think it's nice to have the motor attached to a, a stick like this. <coughs> you can just lay it all out on the desk, but I I think it's actually nice to have the kit like this. And then you just put these screws in. And then just the trick is getting them started in. That's good, so it's in there. And at least that gets it started. What I'll do is I'll pass around a screwdriver also so that everybody can tighten it nice and tight. But at least you can get it in there to start with. Notice the washers have a dull side and a sharp side. Does everybody know that? Do you know why? So the crank went up onto the material? Yeah, so they're, 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 well, it's really because they're stamped. They're, they're made by a stamping process which presses down and like a shear, you know, when you cut something with a shear, it'll push the metal down. So if you look at how washers are made, they're made like this. There's a material and then there's a shear which pushes the force down like this and then another piece on this side pushing like that. And so what happens is as it shears it, one side will be sharp and the other side will be dull. And what I usually like to do is to put the sharp side down so it's more comfortable on, to the touch on the fingers. If you're a musical instrument builder, hydraulophones, you care about what side is sharp and dull because we sometimes use these for underwater whistles. These are all stainless steel washers, by the way, because I sort of use them underwater for underwater musical instruments to make the sound whistling edge as the water flows over the edge of the washer. It's a radiosymmetric whistle. So it's just a little bit of side trivia that isn't totally relevant to this, but... So now... I've got the screws in there, and then of course you'll want to use a screwdriver to tighten it, but I've got it hand tight now, so it's on there pretty solid, solid enough that I can grab the shaft. Do you got the wheel for this, by the way? Got the wheel from the kit, whoever's motor this is? <laughs> I'll put the wheel on and I'll show you. So now, see the motor's on there pretty solid. And uh, give it one last tighten with a screwdriver. And so take out, I'll take out one of the, so there's two wheels in the kit. So you actually got two wheels in case you mess one up. The theory is you might want to glue one or tie one. What you can do is take a board and tie one down to the board through the spokes. And then you'll have a second wheel that you can use when you're using it on the desk. So if you push the wheel on like this, it's just a spline. It just pushes on nicely. I put my thumb against the back of this so it, it's pushing on the shaft itself to hold it on. And now I've got the wheel on here and I can swim. And But we're not going to do rotary swim right now, we're going to do linear swim. So for now what we're going to do is roll it across a desk or a table just like this to spell out our name and lights or whatever the case may be. So now what we want to do is the next step on this thing is, is so we're going to put this on here and then you can decide how you want to lay out your LED strip. So when we go to the My Hall Center we'll possibly solder these in half. You can leave it long if you want and get a longer stick. That's totally an option. But what I often do is I find this is a sufficient, a, a nice length to work with. So then I'd solder it in half you put one strip on the front and one on the back to make it bi-directional if you want. And then you can do all kinds of fun flow arts like this and whip it around and move it around through space and do fine, nice, beautiful artwork as a sort of photographic light painting, for example. Um, there's stiff swims and flex swims, depending on which way you do this. So this is a stiff one because the grain runs this way. This is a flex one because the grain runs this way. If you've got a flex swim, you can flex it, for example, and light up your face like this. In a long exposure photograph, I used to do that back in the 70s. Take a flex swim and light up somebody's face and make a portrait. I used to have people lay on the ground and put the camera overhead so 
so that they look like they're standing, but they're actually laying on the floor to be perfectly still. And then I take the swim and run it down their whole body like this to light them all up. And it was beautiful. No, people said, how did you light that? But there's a million lights there or something. You know, it's a million little points of light that are right in the shot. So it's really beautiful for portraiture and stuff like that. So choose either a stiff or a floppy swim, depending on your artistic and scientific goals. And then when you put this on here, you can put the light, you can put the strip, start with one strip. You can put it on either side. If you put it on this side, you're facing the table like this. And you might choose to do it that way if you want to put some objects on the table and show a little scientific story about a motor flow or something like that. You can do it with objects on the table. You can put the, the strip on this side or you can put the strip on the other side like this. Either way, put the strip on. So now I've got the I've got this on here, and so the next step is now to take the the um, breadboard, and this is it right here, right? So now you've got two resistors here, the voltage divider dividing that, and what you're going to do is you're going to take the blue wire, and the blue wire will be what we call virtual ground. So that's, that's kind of like a ground, but it's not really ground. It's halfway between ground plus five, but it's the reference end of the motor. And the other end of the motor, the purple-violet, you know, color seven, is going to go three wires from the end, which is the analog input. Remember, you've got four analog inputs that you can use on this without conflating with any of the other stuff. Like, if you start using the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi capabilities and all, they're going to conflict with some of the other ones, but these ones are the best ones to use. Uh, the, the, the upper um, left, four of them. By the way, dip, this is called a dip, a dual inline package, and you guys all know how dips are numbered, because in the, in the instructable, I'm saying that the numbers are from the dip, like I often talk about dip numbers, dip pin numbers. So the dip is like this dual inline package, and it goes, it always starts here at pin one, two, three, and then there's something like whatever halfway is, 19, let's say, 20, 21, this is 18, and all the way up to whatever 2n is, 38, let's say. Okay, so now, that gives you a good sense of where you're at. So you know exactly uh, what your count is. So that's pin three, dip pin three, that we said. So now that goes on here like this. And then the next thing you want to do is take your LED strip. You got the strip, yeah, there it is. So take the strip. And what you'll want to do with the strip is connect it up. Now, Remember that there's a directionality to the strip. So be very careful with the strip. Don't bend it too much or knock it around too much. This is the join in the middle. Uh, you can cut it anywhere you want, actually. If you want to make, if you like close body poi, does anybody here do poi or spinning or flow arts? If you like close body poi, where you want to do it like this really fast, close to your body, you want them short, so you might want to cut it off to that long or something. So it's nice and short. If you like long flow art where you're out like this, this is a good length. And if you really want to do crazy fun stuff, you can leave it the full length. So as a, from artistic and scientific purposes, it depends on the scale you want everything to operate at. But I find a nice length. We can pop that apart at the MyHall Center tomorrow. We're going to meet tomorrow at the MyHall Makerspace, and I'll show you how to split that apart. This is the long end of this. I've, I've taken this end. What I did is I cut off the male connector and then I used it on another microcontroller so I could plug it in on a solder. I didn't, instead of a solderless breadboard, I used a soldered breadboard and then I just used that. But you can do whatever uh, suits the purpose. But anyway, at the moment, I'll just say we'll connect this thing up. And then, uh, so you've got, let's get the, let's get the colors, um, let's get, get a, two five, a zero, two, and a five uh, from here, let's say. So the zero, 0, 2, and a 5. So we've got a 0, a 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 0 and a 2. 
and a 5. Actually, there's a 5 right here on the end. Might as well pull it from the end. And then clock and data is five, color 5, which is the green. And then plus 5 is red. And then ground is black, which is white on the light. But I'm using a black wire because it's a bit more common to use black wire for ground. So now we're going to connect the black wire here. And the black one on this is going to go to one of the other grounds because there's multiple grounds here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pins over. So that black wire is going to go here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins over. There it is. And then the red wire goes to V in, which is the lower left pin, the lower leftmost pin on this breadboard. It, that's called V V in, but we're using it as an output. That's the irony of this thing is the best place to get voltage out is the pin that's called V in. <laughs> it happens to back feed out of the USB, surprisingly enough. It's you can power it input put voltage in there, but instead what we're going to do is supply it with voltage to the USB and use the VN as an output to run this LED strip. And then the third wire, which is the middle one, which is the green wire, is the clock and the data together. So we connect that through a 180 ohm resistor. Do you want it? Do you got the resistors here? And then um, there's a kit of resistors which includes a light dependent resistor in the kit, which is the photocell, and there's also various other resistors. So um, uh, now, uh, let's see, where's my thing here? So you can see, uh, sometimes the paint colors are maybe harder to see, but that's, let's find the 180, that's it right there. So that's the 180, 180 ohms, and I don't know if the camera can see that or not. And then now the 180 ohms goes to here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins from that end is the 180 ohms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins from that end. And then the 180 ohms goes to here. Okay. And then, and then the data goes to there, the data pin. So now it's that simple, very simple. So now you've got it connected. Now what I'll recommend is don't peel and stick the double-sided on here until you're really sure where it is. I would play with it first. So I've included some tie wire in each of the kits, and when I designed this swim stick, I put a bunch of holes here, so it's almost like a prototyping stick, so you can tie stuff to it. And there's a bunch of holes along here. Did the same with my mobility scooter. I put a big top on it with a whole bunch of holes in it, so it's like perf board. I can tie all kinds of stuff to it. And uh, and so there, there you have it. You just tie this on here. We'll split this in half and tie it on here. Don't peel and stick this either, though you can once you're sure what you want it, got it where you want it. But for initially. You'll just tie this down on top of here. Once we'll split this in half, and it'll be the length. Or you can make a longer stick and go all the way with it too, if you wish. Uh, and and there you have it. So there's a complete setup. So you have how to set this up. So what we'll do tomorrow in the makerspace is I'll show you how to separate these the soldering station, and then we can solder wires to to the other half of it and and plug it right in and avoid these these connectors as well. And, and then we can also use, so you can use both ends. You can put them in parallel. You can actually put the two in parallel on opposite sides and feed them with exactly the same thing and they'll do exactly the same thing. Or you can go up one side and back down the other and you can separately address them to put different content on one side versus the other. So for example, if you're saying hello world on one side, you might want to put it backwards on the other side so that it's rightwards when you look at it, if you know what I mean. So that the text is right ways on both sides looking at it, which requires separate content. 
So you can decide and play and figure out what you want to do, but at least you can experiment and enjoy uh, getting into the world of swim. So, um, any questions? How can we, um, you know, light the LEDs, multiple LEDs at one time? So these are sequenced. That's it's a sequential, uh, sequential wave and printing machine. I guess it's sequentialized. They're sequentially written. So the data goes in to the first light and the next one and the next one and the next one. So there's different content on each light because they're sequentialized. So what's happening here is that the RGB values are sent down serially. See the little arrows there? They show the sequence. And, and this is a, an addressable strip of lights, something I invented back in the 70s. But of course, now you can get these all over the world. You can connect that one and showcase them, how it behaves. Like yeah, so to connect this one, we need to upload the code. Yeah. So I could show you how to upload the code. We don't have time. We have five minutes. But we got five minutes. So. Um, Tomorrow. Do you guys all know how to run Arduino? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just upload the Arduino code. It's in the Quercus. The code is swimmotor.ino. You need to put it in a directory. So you need to put it inside a directory of that same name. Or if you don't do it, it'll prompt you to it. So if you um, make your swim motor and then move swim motor into dot ino into this directory. <laughs> or just don't do that and try to run it in Arduino. We'll say, hey, it's not in the directory. Would you like me to do it for you? And then do, it, do it for you. So everybody feel free to grab two screws and two washers and then mount your motor and grab a swim stick if you want. Choose whether you want a, a floppy swim or a stiff swim. 